I'll just come out this evening and film a short piece on night driving, particularly seeing as I'm up in uh, northern Scotland at the moment, uh, and these roads are particularly dark once the sun's gone completely down. I thought I'd start with a little bit on twilight driving, driving now just towards the end of the sunset, just before it goes completely dark. Um, and to be honest, I find this is the, the worst time of the day, this and, and the very early dawn, uh, for visibility. There's very, very little contrast between objects in front of you. There's very little contrast between the sky and the ground. Um, and it's much more difficult this time when the light's like this to pick out detail, and to pick out other vehicles. Quite often you'll find that other drivers don't tend to put the lights on as early as they should do, so they can be more difficult to pick out. And also on roads like this, pedestrians and sheep in particular can be very difficult to spot because of that lack of contrast. As that sun drops ever lower, it starts actually just to get a little bit easier to see things, particularly when you've got your headlights and using main beam. We'll talk about main beam shortly. As that light continues to drop, and there's a lot more contrast between the area of road that's illuminated by your headlights and the dark sky and the dark background, it actually becomes easier to see as it drops into pitch darkness. So at the moment I'm still conscious that that twilight's having an effect. And now we've got some deer at the side of the road. One of the other things you've got to bear in mind in Scotland, uh, particularly in the evening time. During the day the deer will move up into the hills. At night time they tend to come and hang around closer to the road, particularly in winter time. So you've really got to have your wits about you. Concentrate as hard as you can. Look in the far distance, but be looking sort of out of the corners of your eyes while well. you use your peripheral vision. Looking for movement, animals. Uh, because those deer, believe me, they can emerge very, very quickly in front of you if you're not, um, if you're not ready for them. So I'm sure for most of you, night driving generally involves driving in built-up areas, areas where there are street lamps like this. The highway code actually says that in areas where there's a 30 miles an hour speed limit, there's street lamps uh, in place, regular intervals, you can drive with side lights on. Um, but to me it makes no sense at all. One of the problems with driving at night is that it's more difficult for people to see you, so make it as easy as you possibly can for people to see you and use your dipped headlights. No need to be using main beam when there are street lamps present. But we'll talk about main beam in a second when we get onto the unlit road. So at night on unlit roads, it's to your advantage to use main beam. So I've just switched main beam on now by pushing the stalk away from me. The advantage clearly is that you can uh, you can see further down the road. The headlight beam is much higher up, points much further down the road, and allows you to have a better view of the road itself. And also pick out road signs much earlier. So just on this dark section of road now, I'll give you a comparison between dipped headlights really only illuminates about 30 feet in front of the car, if that. And main beam, which clearly illuminates a much longer portion of road ahead of you. Gives you more confidence, allows you to move the car along a little bit better. So what have we got to bear in mind when we're driving on unlit roads at night? Well first off, remember the overriding safety rule we're driving we've always got to be able to stop on our own side of the road in the distance that we can see to be clear the distance that we can see to be clear at night on roads like this is the distance that's illuminated by our headlights and that's it can't see anything beyond that 
So actually that, that makes it reasonably easy to work out, particularly when it comes to limit points on corners. The limit point is the furthest point at which the road is illuminated by your headlights. So as we're going around this corner now, I've got to be able to stop in that distance. Now, I mentioned before that your headlights will pick out road signs much earlier. One of the issues I've got at the moment is the way that modern road signs are constructed with a very, very highly reflective surface on them. What you find is, when you're driving on unlit roads at night with your main beam illuminated, these modern road signs, the ones that have been sold in about the last 10 years, can be so reflective that they end up dazzling you. And even if they're not dazzling you, it can be difficult to read what the road sign says. So what I find myself doing is, I've got a particularly bright road sign up ahead, I will dip the headlights from main beam down to dipped beam, just to make it easier to read the road sign. So that one's not too bad, but it looks like it's been there for years. The next one's particularly bright. So if I dip the headlights, I can then read cattle grid at a junction to the right. And then put the main beam back on again, give us a view of the road. So now it's almost completely dark, you can see that there is much greater contrast between the area of road that's been illuminated by the headlights and the background and the sky. So it's actually easier to pick out the road, but it's easier to pick out detail by the side of the road than it is at twilight. But you still don't have that really excellent long extended view that you get on these roads during the day. Only really see what's illuminated by the headlights. One of the advantages of driving at night though is that you can see sometimes when other vehicles are approaching you before they actually come into view. So what you'll get when there's an oncoming vehicle is you'll get a halo effect in the distance. It's the sort of secondary illumination from the headlights that will shine over a hill or around a corner before the vehicle actually comes into view. So it gives you a nice early indication that there's a vehicle coming towards you. Now you do have an element of night vision, it takes a few minutes for your night vision to kick in, but when I say night vision it's just your pupils dilating when it's gone dark to take in more light. One thing that I find works to my advantage is to dim the instrument lights. That's just what we were saying about the deer earlier, the deer earlier on, wasn't it? use your peripheral vision you should be able to pick out those movements before anything happens or before it becomes a serious problem anyway I was always saying dim your instrument lights there's a little wheel usually next to your headlight switch that allows you to dim them and they don't become too distracting in the lower part of your vision you can give more attention to what's happening in front of you and to the deer that are running out. So choice of speed on unlit roads at night, a very good example that we've just seen. As long as you can stop in the distance you can see to be clear and the distance that's illuminated by your headlights, you should be reasonably safe. But that also means you've got to be paying attention and be ready to brake should an animal run out in front of you. So thinking about what happens when we encounter other vehicles on unlit roads at night, see some headlights coming towards us or we can see some tail lights then it's fairly obvious that that vehicle can see us as well either in the rearview mirror or coming towards them so it's important immediately when you see headlights or tail lights that you dip your main beam but if they're in the distance and then they go out of view again then there's nothing wrong with just bobbing the main beam back on again just to help you illuminate the road and see a little bit better until they come back into view again. Some people tend to dip the headlights very early when they first get the indication of here's a halo coming towards us. So we dip the lights now and then back on again once they've gone past. It was just saying that some people tend to dip the headlights very early. 
there's not really any need. Remember that those main beam headlights are helping you see down the road, keeping you safe. If you dip them too early, then you lose some of your own vision. So you only need to dip them when the headlights of the oncoming vehicle are in view, or when the tail lights are actually in view. So here's a section of road with no road markings, fresh tarmac, just dip the lights, as soon as those lights come into view, dip our headlights, and you can see the other driver did the same, and then bob them back on again. Just a note on overtaking vehicles at night, as you're catching up to a slower vehicle, you should keep your headlights dipped, otherwise you're running the risk of dazzling them in the rear view mirror. As soon as your headlights have passed the driver's door mirror of the vehicle as you're overtaking it, then it's appropriate for you to bob your main beam back on again and illuminate the road ahead. And if it's you that's been overtaken, similar courtesy, keep your main beam on while the vehicle's behind you. As soon as the vehicle's overtaken you, you should dip your lights so that you're not dazzling them in the rearview mirror. See how bright the reflective surface is on some of these street signs? The route board is fairly good, that's fairly easy to read, but the reduced speed now, boys, the narrow road narrows from both sides, very, very bright until I dip the headlights. Then they're a little bit more readable. Again, the same here, these are very bright. I dip the headlights, it makes them a little bit more easy to read. One thing just to be wary of when you're driving at night on roads like this, if you go going any distances, it can get a little bit mesmerising. You can end up feeling like you're staring into space. But really keep a very careful eye on your fatigue levels. If you get tired driving on a road like this, find somewhere to pull over and have a break. There's plenty of laybys, little parking areas like the one up on the left here. Even if it's just five minutes, stretch your legs, get out of the vehicle. Give yourself a break. Okay, so that's night driving. So like I said, not a massive amount to the subject. But it was worth having a look at. Not really been able to look at dealing with other vehicles on these roads. I mean, I've just driven 30 miles and encountered two other vehicles. So unfortunately, we didn't, uh, didn't get a chance to look at how you deal with oncoming vehicles or overtakes so maybe I'll do another one at some point in the future but for now thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe uh, you get a chance go and have a look at the website as well www.reglocal.com and we'll see you next time